911, what is your emergency? Hi, I just uh, went around a corner and I came across this accident. It's a, it's a van with kids, a dog, and uh, it looks like the driver was injured. Can you provide me with some more detail? Well, it looks like the van hit a pole. It, um, gosh, it looks like there's wires down over the car, and um, I don't know, but it's dangerous. Okay, we'll dispatch EMS right away. Chop Tank Electric is time. Hi, this is the County 911 Center. Yes, sir. We received a call for an accident with wires down uh, with people trapped in the vehicle. Okay, what's the address? It's the intersection of Route 231 and Brooks Corner Road. All right, the intersection of Route 231 and Brooks Corner Road? Yes, and there are people trapped in the vehicle with the wires on, on the vehicle. Okay, we'll get somebody out there right away. My name's Nick Noon. I'm a journeyman lineman with Chop Tank Electric Cooperative. This is Nathan Smith, chief lineman with Chop Tank. As you just heard a 911 call come in regarding an accident with wires down. Not only do vehicle accidents cause wires down, but also storms, high winds, and trees cause wires down also. This video is to teach the first responders in the community the dangers and precautions of wires being down. In this scene, we're going to demonstrate uh, safety. Here we have a vehicle accident. We're going to be, uh, demonstrate the safeties of the vehicle accident, wires down. Uh, we have two different scenarios here. One is our overhead lines that we have that have 7,200 volts. And the second is our underground that we also have that also has 7,200 volts. Um, both of these are just as dangerous. Uh, here we have one that a cable that's underneath the vehicle and the other one we have laying on top of the vehicle. In both circumstances, this vehicle is considered hot and at 7,200 volts until a uh, lineman gets there and deems it safe and has it grounded. Uh, the procedures, it would take a while for us to get there, uh, but the first steps is if you roll up on this and you see us or you're in this accident, you'd call 911 and they'd put the, the procedures in place on who gets called and how we get there. Uh, so, Naturally, emergency responders are going to be the first ones on scene, and they, their natural instinct is to go and help somebody, and they're going to want to run up to this vehicle. Well, today, that's why we're here, to tell you not to do that. Uh, your step potential is 35 feet around this vehicle is also could be energized, and you want to stay away from the vehicle. And if the car is not in, on fire, there's in no danger, the person inside the vehicle needs to stay in the vehicle until we get there and deem it safe because she's fine in there the way she is, and uh, that's the way we want to keep it. Nobody else gets hurt. We don't want you to get hurt trying to save her. So when, when we get there, um, it's going to take us a while to do our thing because we're going to be to adjacent poles, having to ground everything and ground. If it's underground, there's different uh, transformers down line that we would have to go to and do different steps. So uh, we have to open, test, and ground, and tag our line for it to be considered dead to our standards. And then we'll come and help you take the stuff off the car so you can get in there and help them. Next, we're gonna demonstrate how to get somebody out of the vehicle if they're in immediate danger inside the vehicle and have to come out. So at this time, you can see that the vehicle is on fire. So we're gonna to wanna to get her out of the vehicle. If we, ha we haven't been there to get the line de energized and you need to get her out, these are the steps that we're going to take. At any, at no time do we want her to touch the car in the ground at the same time because that makes her a potential to ground. So we're going to get her to open the door and stand on the ledge of the car without touching the ground, without touching anything else except for the vehicle. She's going to cross her arms across her chest and she's going to hop to the ground, keeping her feet close together, touching. Now without, she doesn't want to touch the car at all, and then she's going to slowly shuffle herself, keeping her feet together, all the way 35 feet out, until she's in a safe spot to be able to walk and get away from the vehicle without having any step potential. The reason why her feet are staying together is because if she takes her feet and takes them apart from each other, she becomes that potential for electric to go through her and out the other foot. Now, naturally, I wouldn't be this close to the vehicle. I'd be 35 feet, but for demonstration purposes, that's why I'm here where I'm at. As you've just seen with the accident scene that Nick demonstrated, that's one of many situations that we may come across that cause lines to come down. Uh, tree limbs fall, 
storms, all that, all those things can actually bring the power lines to the ground. And at this time, we've got to assume that the power lines are energized for safety. What we're going to demonstrate to you in this, this scene is going to be, scenario will be a tree branch leaning against the line. So just always remember, as Nick goes up here and touches this tree branch to the line, you can see the electricity will start to flow through the branch and it's going to ground. So at the same time, you need to remember that anytime a tree branch or tree is touching the utility line, what happens is the voltage is trying to go to ground and then the ground around the tree also becomes energized. So you may not even have to step foot close to the tree. The ground becomes energized. You can get electrocuted through step potential by walking up close to that tree. As you see, the tree branch is starting to smoke. Depending on conditions, you'll see it. You'll see the electricity start flowing through it. You can see the fire starting. The electricity is actually going through that that branch and it's going to ground. There's a path. This scenario here, we have 7,200 volts coming across this top line. <clears throat> Nick's holding this with a fiberglass insulated stick. What he's going to show you, he's going to draw the electricity out of the, out of the line. You're going to see an arc. And that right there, that's, that's 7,200 volts, very deadly. So anytime working on utility lines, we always have to, to uh, make sure that the line has been opened up. It's a set of rules that, that we have to go by. We open, and then we test, and then we ground the line. And we have to put a tag on it to let other linemen or utility workers know that, that there's, for some reason or another, this line has been de-energized by a, a professional lineman. At this point, we're going to use this audio uh, tool to, it's audio and visual aid so we can tell whether or not the line has been energized or de-energized. Right now, we're verifying the line is still energized. Nick's going to open this fuse door that's feeding this center phase on our demonstration trailer. Then open it up. Okay, this is the, this is the first step in the process that we have to go through. We've just opened the line, made a visual opening point. Our second, our second step is to test. All right, this time we've, we've verified, we've opened the fuse up, and now we're going to verify that the line has been de-energized. As you can see now, the light's steady blinking, and there's, not, there's, there's a pulsation sound. So that's the first step in our process, or the second step is first is to open, now is to test. Now that we've created a visual opening point and tested it, we can apply a ground on the line <coughs> that will assure us that our art were protected. All right, as, as Nick applies this overhead ground, after this has been done, then we can actually touch the line with our leather gloves, but only in, until that time. Now that our overhead ground has been installed, the next step in our process is we have to install a tag at our opening point. What this tag is doing, it's reassuring us that any time another lineman would come by into the, into the scene, he can see that there's been a visual opening point created and that for some reason or another, there's someone working on this line. And we know not to try to re-energize to uh, heat up a cable that somebody could potentially be working on, or there could be an accident that's caused, caused a, uh, some reason for uh, the public to be in danger. Okay, now that we've gone through this process, you can see sometimes it takes a while for, for the lineman to, show, to, uh, to uh, show up on the scene and deem that the, uh, the electric line has been de-energized. Uh, just because we're not there doesn't mean that we haven't done anything. You can see that this, this may be spans poles away from, from the uh, actual scene. It could take a little bit of time to get this established. So what we're going to do now, we're going to go ahead and, and show you the process of re-energizing a line. We're not allowed to close an opening point back in until a tag has been removed because then we know now that the line, in the process the line has, uh, is, has the ability to come energized with no harm to any of our workmen or the public. Nick's going to now take the ground off. This same process applies for overhead and underground. We have special grounds for underground that are that are set up exactly for for underground scenarios. Okay, now that we've removed our ground, we can reestablish. We can re, we can close back in on our switch, 
re-energizing the line. Okay, Nick, you can... Nick just energized this outside phase, heating up 7,200 volts to the, first, the phase closest to us. And we know that because down here on the ground we have a, a meter set up with a light bulb that you can see that, that those wires are actually energizing this light bulb. This whole process is being done off of a 120 volt back feed. So that's another thing to keep in mind is that any generators hooked up in, incorrectly can be hazardous to linemen. Uh, at this time, we're going to go ahead and, and demonstrate to you actual what happens when a fuse door opens up. As Nick closes this in, we have another light bulb here, down here at our, on the trailer as a display. It shows us that now the B phase or center phase on our trailer has been energized. As linemen, we've, we've been trained, we've been through a three-year apprenticeship program, and uh, we are not allowed to touch anything. We have, you see all the, the equipment that we have on, we have rubber gloves, we have sleeves, we have FR clothing, we have EH rated boots, all these to ensure our, our safety. We have ANSI rated uh, safety glasses, hard hats, all this is to ensure our safety. So at no time does that anyone, any public uh, person in the public would want to go to a, a down utility line and touch it. Because you can see as, as trained professionals, this is what we have to wear and these are the processes that we have to go through and it's to ensure our safety. The last thing you want to do when trying to go up to a scene is to en endanger yourself and become a victim as well. We made this awareness video to educate and inform you. We want to share this video with our community, fire, EMS, police, and our schools, and also tow truck drivers to show the dangers of downed power wires. Chop Tank electric personnel are available to give a presentation as well as show this video to your group. Just give us a call. At Chop Tank Electric, we're doing our part to keep our members and our community safe every day.